Tell me, tell me, tell me. I love spooky things. I was in the office one day and we have like an air conditioner unit in the, just in the window. Mm -hmm. And I just heard this loud bang and <clears throat> the air conditioner had flown, like went out the window. Before we get started with our episode, we're going to hear from our sponsor, Bombas. How's your sock drawer looking lately? Maybe it's time for a little spring cleaning and refresh. So get comfy this spring and give back with Bombas. Head over to bombas.com slash Rebecca and use code Rebecca for 20% off on your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash Rebecca and use code Rebecca at checkout. Now let's get started with this week's episode. Hey guys, I think most of y'all would agree with me when I say you can only really express your true self with your closest friends. My friends know me inside and out and because of that, I can share anything with them. But friendships, like anything else, can be kind of hard to keep up with when life gets crazy. It can be schools, chores, jobs, or even when a best friend moves and has to change schools. Luckily, Instagram is here to save the day because they allow me to create close friends lists that allow me to send stories to just my besties. Like, maybe it's a funny meme that I found while scrolling, or maybe it's that photo I took while I was ugly crying during that sappy rom-com. I love being able to share that easily with just close friends to give them a laugh. There's a saying that goes, it's just the little things, and I swear it's still true. Because thanks to Instagram, I can share that everyday ridiculousness with my close friends. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today. I, in my biggest challenge with every one of these episodes is not being awkward when I start the episode. I feel that. Because I'm always like, hmm, what? <laughs> what to do? What to do? <laughs> and I say that every episode, but I don't I don't know what else to say. Yeah. It's just, That's okay. I'm Alyssa. Hi. Hi. Thank you for hanging out with me. So tell everyone what your profession is. I'm a funeral director. I love and I love that you or, came like in all black. That's I came so fitting. I came from work, so like granted this is a work outfit. So do you like do you is that like your part of your uniform? Like you just wear all black all the time for work? I don't have to wear all black. I have to dress professionally. Okay. So like I can wear grays and like a white I just black is easy, black okay. is simple. My entire wardrobe is black, so it's like I love it. Black everything just makes it's just easy. I love, black, but you have black. like the pink nails, and so it just it works out. So for I'm having an identity crisis. That's okay. I love it. They're but not the hot black. Clone. They've been black for for <laughs> the last six months, and I got them pink this time, and I'm freaking out. I think but it, it looks so good. Yeah. So I I have so many questions. Like I'm I'm a spooky. I love lover. it. I'm I'm a spooky person. I love everything about it. I want to know everything. I want to know like how did you decide you wanted to become a funeral director? And then, like, how did you get there? Like, what does it look like for anyone that wants to go through a similar career path? Like, what are the qualifications? What are the requirements? Like, right. do you go to school for it? Like, go ahead. I'll stop rambling. I'm going to shut up. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I always say, you know, it starts with temporary lack of good judgment. <laughs> and um, for myself, I honestly always wanted to do it. Like, always yeah. wanted to do it. I had a lot. I'm not, um, I have no family in the business. Okay. So I had a lot of. I don't know if I should do it. So I went to beauty school first. Okay. Did the beauty school thing. My mom was a hairdresser. So I had my trade and then I said, no, nah, I'm still going to do more trade science. For me in New York, you, you're you duly licensed. So I'm a licensed okay. funeral director and I'm a licensed embalmer. And in New York state, we just call ourselves funeral directors. Okay. Quick question. First, what was allur alluring to you about becoming a funeral director? And then two, what is an embalmer for those that don't know? Okay. A, what was alluring I guess like I always, everyone will always say it's a calling and like it's true like okay. there's so many things that are going to pull you into the career but like why I love it is it's a job that I'm able to show off my best attributes and qualities as okay. a person I believe okay um that made me want to do it so like being compassionate understanding listening being there for people helping people that was a big thing I can do I also don't stay in an office all day I'm not at a computer job every day is different I get to do hair and makeup still things that I love there's science to it there's there's like there were so many everything. like everything just kind of seemed to fit and there wasn't anything that really was like wow I can't do that like right we'll make it work um you had another question with that. Well, for those that don't know, what is an embalmer? Um, embalmer is somebody who embalms decedents and embalming them is uh, replacing their blood in the 
best way to say this, replacing their blood with a embalming fluid, which most people know it contains formaldehyde, which is in there. And it will just delay decomposition. Okay. That's what we say. Okay. So you basically um, like drain the body. Drain it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. When you say it like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, a, I'm a... like whenever I say it nicely to families, I'm like, like to explain something that you don't want to get into fine detail about is just like we make a small incision. We raise the vein and the artery through the artery. We will pump embalming they fluid it out. Yeah. yeah. No, that's where the embalming fluid is going to go <laughs> yeah. in. And then out of the vein, we drain the blood out and it goes right down the sink, right down the drain. Interesting. Yes. As like a true crime girly, I'm very, I love it. I love it so much. I'm like, fascinated. Like, right? yeah, yeah, you're draining it. Right. Got it. Got 100%. It. 100%. <laughs> it kind of like, I think too, like it, it could be intimidating. Like when I first went to obviously school and all that, it could be intimidating. All of it can, but like you ever pump a pimp, pop a pimple I and love, you're like, yeah, yeah it's, it's self-gratifying it's so like, self or you have a scab or like, yeah. It, or like you see something dead on the side of the road, you can't help but to go like look, yeah, and like kind of just stare for a little bit, yeah. It's kind of like that. No, I feel that. But it's like it when you're doing it over and over again, it gets a little different. Like yeah, like you're used to popping pimples. Like yeah, you're yeah. used to draining a body. Right. Yeah. Right. No. No. <laughs> I love it. Just, That's you know, great. We're just on Vampire just Diaries over here. <laughs> And Normal so girl conversation. You said that you had to get dual licensed. So what did it like? What did that look like? Like, what does it mean to get a license to be a funeral director or an embalmer? Like, what's required to receive those licenses? Right. So, like here, I had to go to school. So, what's required is an not even an associate's degree per se. You have to go to an accredited mortuary school. Okay. So complete the requirements from an accredited mortuary school. In this case, I got an associate's degree. Mm -hmm. They do have a bachelor's available. Once you finish the program, you're able to take your national board exams. Okay. So you get one in science, one in arts. Now that's a nationwide test. Once you pass both, you become duly licensed in New York. You have to do a one-year residency or an internship. I guess that's a better word. And then you take a New York state law exam. And that's it. Then I have to maintain 12 continuing education credits per every two years. Interesting. So it's a license that you constantly have to renew. So is it a license that you have to fund when you renew or does your job do that for you? Because like when I was a teacher, our licenses, like we had to pay for all the credits and we had to do everything ourselves. So I just wasn't sure if that was something that yep, was unique to teaching. We, or... we do ourselves. Okay, so I'm cool. sure that there's probably employers out there who right. might cover those expenses. But it's not like the normal. Okay. It's not con you know, you're just, you got to keep up with it. Your license is your license. Fascinating. So then what does like a typical day as a, like, what do you do? Girl, there is no okay, typical day okay, in funeral okay. service. Okay, so then tell me, like, what do you do? Like, what are all of your, are all of your responsibilities? So I work in, like, a, a small privately owned funeral home. So okay. it's very mom and poppy. It's very, like... That's okay. Very mom and poppy. So it's everything. So from every day is different. Obviously, we just don't know what's going to happen, who's going to pass away, what kind of funeral they're going right. to want, where they're going to die. But I do everything from being on call, which I am on call right now. Right. So like once that call comes in, it's taking the information. It's fine. You know, do we have to pick up the decedent right away? Are we going to make an appointment for them to come in? Depending on all that, then we meet with the families, plan all the, everything that has to do with the funeral. Okay. If there's an embalming, if you're going to the crematory, if you're doing, it's anything funeral service to when I tell you cleaning the toilets. So who who calls you? Like when someone passes, is it a family or is it like the hospital? Like well, how does that Usually work? it's the family, okay. typically, but that's not always the case. Like you can tell your your nurse's aide or the hospice facility what funeral home you're using. Um, I still have to make contact with the family anyway, right. but it relieves some pressure there. But usually it's the family. You're usually like the first phone call they're making. Interesting. Which is nev that never like ceases to amaze me that like sometimes people are calling up and I'm the first voice they're hearing after you know their mom passed away Crazy. like it never i just yeah so so okay so, so your phone rings it's a family calling you what questions do you need to ask them like what information do you need from them like immediately as soon as their loved one passes away yeah i always confirm that somebody has passed away because mm -hmm. sometimes they have not yet and that happens at times and then i ask them you know what's the relationship usually they say that like my mom passed away at and i'll say where are they I usually here I have to get your your name, the address, like your address is, works as part of my authorization to pick up. And then depending on where the decedent is, I go right away 
or we wait. So like a hospital, usually they have standard operating procedure, like the body's going to have to go down into the morgue. They have to clear it. There's going to be a death certificate. But if it's in the home, you got to go right away. Yeah. You don't want. Interesting. Well, someone sent me, you, you reminded me of a story that somebody sent me because <laughs> you said, you know, sometimes, sometimes they haven't passed yet. Someone sent me a story about how their great grandmother passed away and you know they were going to have a funeral at their home for her. It's going to be open casket and everything. And all the family came. Everyone was crying. It was a very somber event. And then all of a sudden it started pouring. And so everyone was like just kind of panicking a little. They tried to just, you know, close the casket so that it didn't get yep. flood or anything. <laughs> but they just kind of left her in the yard, went inside. They're like, we'll just go back and finish once the storm passes. Well, all of a sudden, after like 10, 15 minutes, they hear the glass door to outside slam shut and in walks the great grandmother, who apparently was not, was not, what? Was not dead. What? Was not passed. <laughs> and she was muttering to herself about being left in the was rain. Was this in America? I, this was a long this is like 30 years ago okay like 30 30 ish concerned. years ago Do you ever see those yeah. videos when people wake up at their own funerals it's like yes. no yeah. she was like you left me in the rain and it was cold out there and i had to get out of this box and just shuffled along to her room and shut the door and everyone just sat there like is that a miracle or a nightmare <laughs> what's happening like, yeah they said this was like a long time ago this okay. was like at least 30 years ago but still like i have people call the funeral home and they'll be like um what's today is today friday we want to have a wake on monday did somebody pass away no but she's going to oh my god i can't plan a funeral you know for it's, monday yeah it i'm it all the time all the time i feel that to an extent because i have an aunt who um is has dementia a great aunt and they brought her to hospice three years ago and in may may three years ago and they said i'm sorry but she's not going to she's most likely not going to make it to fourth of july this was three, three years, years ago. ago oh yeah marsha's not she's a still she's, she's going, still, she's going. still in hospice she's still in hospice i've so we get a lot of phone calls a lot of times families that i work with they're it's because their family's starting hospice so they want to start you know doing the homework or they'll give us a call and say listen we just started hospice this is your heads up this is what we would want i can see people in hospice like within 24 hours to years and like i try not to Crazy. stress out when families are like no like it's gonna be any minute i'm like, like i'll see you in a you, month you don't <laughs> know <laughs> that me. like we don't know the anything human body is crazy yeah it can do so many like wild like again and like in it it becomes a very a very difficult thing because like of course we're so happy that she's around it's also really hard to watch her struggle the way quality that she versus is. quantity and, right the quality versus quantity question is so hard and i think it's even harder when like it is someone that is family to you like i think it's something that's a lot easier to think about or talk about when it's not someone that you love yeah like what are your thoughts on that quality versus quantity you know i think it's up to the person the family the people um i've seen I wouldn't, I'm not a person to ever say like they're in a better place or they're, you know, they're relieved now. I do think that death is the end game. Like mm -hmm. I'm like firmly believe like when it's time, it's time. Mm -hmm. um, but quality is definitely better, I think, than quantity in a lot of cases. But if you could build up on relationships and things, but things like dementia and stuff, it's it's much more complicated it's really difficult yeah. i find um especially for the the family and like having that people will say like a lot of times or i see often that burden is lifted when someone passes like they almost feel relieved like this not that that person was a burden but it's it's like you want them to not be so miserable but you don't like families. you want them to not be miserable but you don't want them to go like it's such a hard this is also like a really weird ADHD question. You mm -hmm. don't have to answer it if you don't want to. I just popped into my brain. Do you believe in like an afterlife? I do. Okay. I'm I just... do. I believe in a lot of things. Um... Sorry, that plant <laughs> no. is like creeping I up felt on like you. someone was touching my head for a second. <laughs> it's like... the spooky. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm I'm a Catholic. I was raised Catholic, so mm -hmm. I am religious. But I'm not like 
steadfast into one thing. Like I mm-hmm. believe in energy. I okay. believe that we're all going to your your energy has to go somewhere. I like there definitely is more. Okay. I, like I feel like death can't be bad. I don't. No, I get I, that. No, no, no. no. That's, yeah. I just uh, I'm nosy. I know. Yeah. Like I good. just want to know all the things. Okay. Yeah. So family calls you. They give you all the information. You go to pick up the body. What's next? Usually, I find out what the, what like I. That's the crazy thing. I, you need to tell me what what kind of funeral we're having. Like, oh, okay. right away, yeah, almost yeah. right away. Like not really, but yeah. Like we okay. need to know. What are the options? Well, usually I'll say like, do you know what kind of funeral you're looking to have? And then most of the time, sometimes they, they know, they don't know. Yeah. So I ask like, do you want to have a wake, like a visitation where people are going to see your loved one in a casket? calling hours do you want to go to church is there religious affiliations and then i'll always ask what kind of disposition burial or cremation because that can change everything okay um if that person's gonna have a wake they get embalmed um in most cases like not all the time there's small loopholes to it but most of the case then they go back to the funeral home and they're going to be embalmed if there's just going to be a cremation we'll have refrigeration if it's a direct burial meaning no wake we'll use refrigeration so i'll bring them into the morgue and that's kind of depends on what they're doing, where they're decedent, where their loved one's going to go, like into the, you know, no, to be a mom to be cremated. Yeah, yeah. To my, be, uh, yeah. my mother-in-law passed uh, about four ish, four or five years ago. So like, as you're also going through the process, I'm like, huh, that's how that's how that happened. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, huh, yep. I'm living it in my in my head. Yeah, interesting. So like, we're gonna take a quick break and hear from our sponsor. How's your sock drawer looking lately? Time for a little spring cleaning and refresh. Bombas just dropped a brand new line of tees, socks, and undergarments that'll help get your drawer a little bit more in check while also doing a little bit of good. Just in case you weren't aware, Bombas has a one purchase, one donated mission. What that means is every time you buy an item from them, whether it's a sock, a t-shirt, an undergarment, whatever it is, they will then donate essential clothing items to people facing homelessness. And to date, Bombas has donated over a hundred million clothing items to people in need. I love companies like that. Really caring about making a difference. And let's be honest, springtime weather can be a little crazy. That's why Bombas has merino wool blend socks that naturally wick moisture and help regulate your temperature a little better. It's perfect for that unpredictable and sometimes rainy spring weather. What I love about Bombas is one, again, they actually care about doing good, but also the fabric is so buttery soft. It's just so comfortable. So get comfy this spring and give back with Bombas. Head over to bombas.com slash Rebecca and use code Rebecca for 20% off on your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash Rebecca and use code Rebecca at checkout. Hey guys, I think most of y'all would agree with me when I say you can only really express your true self with your closest friends. My friends know me inside and out and because of that, I can share anything with them. But... Friendships, like anything else, can be kind of hard to keep up with when life gets crazy. It can be schools, chores, jobs, or even when a best friend moves and has to change schools. Luckily, Instagram is here to save the day because they allow me to create close friends lists that allow me to send stories to just my besties. Like, maybe it's a funny meme that I found while scrolling, or maybe it's that photo I took while I was ugly crying during that sappy rom-com. I love being able to share that easily with just close friends to give them a laugh. Of course, there are times I love sharing photos to stories with all my followers, you know, whether it's a group photo from a birthday dinner out, or a group family photo from a beach vacation, but... That video of me being chased by a pigeon while at said beach? Yeah, I'm gonna keep that one for just my close friends. There's a saying that goes, it's just the little things, and I swear it's still true. Because thanks to Instagram, I can share that everyday ridiculousness with my close friends. Now, back to the episode. What, what are the, I mean, obviously, like, the blatant differences between burial and cremation are, like, really obvious, but, like, just detail and like i'm i'm just so interested in the nitty-gritty like price wise like what what is a typical like i don't know how to i'm gonna blow your mind please tell me okay so burial and cremation 
literally it's just a form of disposition. So consider that like the last thing we, we even worry about. It's okay. not really, it's not, doesn't change anything that happens before that moment that you're going in the ground or oh, getting cremated. Okay. Nothing is different. Even, you know, maybe you can't pick a metal casket if you're getting cremated, but nothing, you can be embalmed. You can have your makeup done. You can have a wake. You can have whatever you want. Oh, None okay. of that changes. And then when you get to burial and cremation, when it comes to cost, so like all those costs basically before that would be the same. There's no difference. So what, what costs come into, so since we're not there yet, then right. talking about the embalming, what processes are done and what do they cost and like what are what are all the options so like if you're gonna have a wake you you have like an arrangement fee you have embalming dressing casketing cosmetology um probably a facilities fee supervision fee supervision of funeral service you're probably going to need a hearse to transport to the cemetery or the crematory if you go to church there's all like church fees and pole bearer fees and then after all of that it's just the burial and cremation there is such a price difference. Yeah. Okay. So a really good way to put this is in New York, right? So New York cemeteries and crematories are not tied in with funeral homes. So like if you're going to be cremated, I'm not cremating you. Okay. I take you to a crematory and a person there is going to cremate you and I'll right. oversee that. Separate right. separate, same thing. Like if I, you're going to the cemetery, I'm not going to dig the grave. I'm going to take you to the cemetery. Right. right? So you don't want to dig the grave. No, no. Your nails I are too pretty. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so it, when it comes to cremation, the crematory, right. Would charge 500 right now. The cost is $521. Wow. Okay. If you're going to get buried and you don't have a cemetery plot, right. Now you have to buy one. So I'm just going to give you Ballpark. a very average price of my local cemeteries. You want a plot, $8,000. Whoa, we're what? Not, we're not done. If that <gasps> cemetery requires a vault, you're looking at another 2000 Now you're at $10,000. And then you have to pay somebody to dig the grave. So you're looking at another $2,000. You're talking $12,000 versus $521. As of right now, those are the costs of the, the places that I'm, yeah. But everything else will be the same. The funeral home fees, the arrangements, dress, that will all be the same. Oh my God. Burial versus cre cremation. And the funeral home doesn't make any money off of that stuff. Like that 521, that's not profits to us. The 10,000, 12,000, that's not profit. So to what, me. like all the embalming and all the things like that, like what are, what do those fees usually look like? Here in New York, mm -hmm. probably around $10,000, $12,000. Holy moly. And it's all, on its wow, own. hold on. So, like, if you wanted to bury someone here in New York, that would be, like, $22,000? About, yeah. <gasps> Plus your headstone. All in your problem. Like, what? It's a, it sounds crazy. Like, the price and, like, the nation average, like, nation averages are much lower than this number. But, like, all in, you're talking, like, flowers. You're talking, yeah, like. If you're going to have a burial, burial's gonna, only going to be for the rich one day, I assure you. Like, no one's going to be able to afford this land and the grave opening prices. $3,000 in some of these cemeteries just to dig the hole. That, is, like, my my brain is, like, yeah, not, like, not like okay. A, a lot, $25,000, you know, for a full funeral. But if you do cremation, it's not going to be that much. That's so why I have they... like a lot of families buy plots or they have family plots. So they, they have it in their family and then they want to use it. And I'm like, it doesn't matter if you bought it in 1972 for $1,000. It costs $2,800 to use that grave now. Just to, just to use it. Wow. Even though you own it. Why? Like that? It's a grave opening fee. It's They crazy. will put capitalism <laughs> at its finest. It's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's Okay. And I want to get buried too. So like I need to lock down some land. I can't, I don't have land. Well, I know <laughs> my husband's family does have a plot at their church. I know that they do. But that like, I'm still so mind blown. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, please like, continue. When they want to use it, it's going to yeah. cost like probably at least a thousand dollars. You know, I don't know where, what town and stuff, but yeah, just it's to a, use it. It's a pretty rural middle yeah, of probably nowhere. Probably a little less. Yeah. You get like a grave digger who comes yeah. and does it by I mean, hand. Shoot, there's so many cousins. Just, <laughs> yeah. Like, my God. Here in New York, it's a lot different though. Like our laws are, are a bit different. Um, Like with how it's controlled. All of our cemeteries and crematories are not profit. Interesting. Interesting, right? <laughs> like that's the only word I can muster right <laughs> I'm just so Wild. shocked. Like, okay, well, okay. So, like, I, I was just about to ask you, like, do you think there's any misconceptions? That's one, yeah, right there. But do you, do you think there are any other misconceptions around like your job, around like what it means to be, or like anything that people just don't understand about 
what you do? I feel like a lot of people like use us as like the like we're the punching bag. We're we're the ones that are where it's always us. Like you guys are overcharging. You're the ones who are taking advantage of people. Like all these things and it really is such like a played out myth. Like we're not we have to make a living and also there are so much other fees that are associated with the funeral that the funeral home doesn't make any money off of, you know? Like and it's like we're essentially like we're event planners. Like think of a wedding planner. Yeah. I am like a wedding planner. But, but for funerals, yeah. and we also take care of the deceased. Wow. But like we get the, yeah, that's what I hate. It's just like everyone always says that we just take advantage of people. And it's like, ugh. Well, um, someone else sent me another story about how um, they're a funeral director. And this this woman, um, she was a mother, like not a mother. And she might have also been a grandmother. I'm not entirely sure, but it was someone's mother. Right. Um, And she passed and it was just very hard for the family they had a lot of trouble deciding like what exactly they wanted, but they ended up deciding that they wanted to do a burial. Um, well, then the next argu argument came of what do we bury her with? Do we bury her with her jewelry? Do we bury her without her jewelry? Does anyone want it for sentimental values? And eventually they decided that they were going to keep all the jewelry except for her wedding ring and that they wanted her to be buried with the wedding ring to their father and this idea of eternal love and all that, which is great, beautiful, love it had the funeral, everything went well, everything was as beautiful, as beautiful as it can be for such a sad occasion. And all of a sudden, a few days later, family comes back. Um, it was the father, the husband, and the daughter. Um, we actually changed our mind and we would like the wedding ring back. And the funeral director said, what do you mean? <laughs> it's like, well, we decided that our daughter like really wants to be proposed to with her mother's ring. And we would we would like that to make that happen. It's very important to her. And she's like, do you know where that ring is right now? It's under the ground in your wife's casket. Like she's buried. She's has that happened a lot to you. It's never happened to me. But if it did, like you're it's gonna it, look we can get it back for you can you oh yeah it's gonna cost you a lot of money and prob how much, how probably much a court order too but crazy yeah that it, it's considered a disinterment because you have to dig up the remains so you'd pay for that and then you would pay to rebury that person plus funeral plus permit yeah seven thousand dollars probably wow depending on you know if there was a vault like you you could be looking at big money well don't you know it was the funeral director's fault she was just being difficult. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't you know? She I just never, doesn't want them to be yeah, happy. I know. I would never. I don't recommend people burying rings. Like, I understand. Like, any jewelry. Like, if you, no one wants it, it's costume. But, like, it is sentimental value. And you never know when you're going to change your mind. And if you do one day, yeah, you're out of luck. Like, what is, what is, it doesn't. I, no I'm, one's going to see it again, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I don't know. But <laughs> I buried a lot of diamond rings. A lot of diamond lot? rings. Oh, goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. What do you, do you have any like specific scenarios of any any times that you felt like wow like this specific issue is making my job so much harder or these are kinds of behaviors or people or whatever that make my job so much harder than it really needs to be like anything like that? I think that it's not. I think the biggest thing is that people now it's a lot of people just need a lot of support through like out things with like. Um, detailed and personalization and things like that so some people really want to get involved in some of the processes like let's say making church programs which is beautiful but when you want a lot of family involvement really creating that design and doing it at the funeral home and and you only have 24 hours to turn that around it could be stressful it, yeah you know like it, it's it's a great idea that you want to come in and decorate the entire funeral home and all this great stuff like I love that personalization but there's also a funeral in the morning there's a funeral in the afternoon there you know um yeah it could be a little stressful at times too many cooks in the kitchen right you know? right you have a funeral arrangement you shouldn't come in with 12 family members it can be very stressful and, and very everyone hard. you know 12 people that's a lot of opinions yeah and what are the likelihood that 12 different people are all gonna have the same opinion right 
it's it's calm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exa like I always say, like, if you think you have a dysfunctional family, believe me, we all do. We all do. <laughs> There's every, something with everybody. Every family. That's what my job has taught me. We all have problems. <laughs> like plain and simple. Are there any other like specific things or like instances that you can think of and you're like, oh, man, I just like can't win or like I don't get paid enough for this or anything like that. I would say I say I don't get paid enough for this a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> Do you, are there any specific examples that you can talk about? No, you know what it is? No, it's like sometimes you could be you're just doing something and even you have your personal life is still going on. But yeah, you go to the hospital and no one tells you that the decedent's 400 pounds. And then you, you're driving back and like, you just, I don't get paid enough for this. Like, I, I don't, you know, how would you, how, how would you manage that? Like, how, how do you, usually I call somebody crying <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually like a cry laugh. Like I did it again. And then I'm really crying. Like I'm really crying. Like, I don't know what to do. You have right. to meet me now. Usually I have a lot of good friends. I have a lot of oh, friends. Oh, so it's not even like a colleague, like it's a friend or well, like... yeah, or my colleagues are my friends, but like... Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Well, like... I don't know how, like how many people work at the funeral home with you? So there's two funeral directors. Okay. And everyone else works per diem. Okay. So there's okay. no other funeral directors. They come, it could be you, you can come oh, work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they come okay. and they help out. They open the doors for people and stuff like that, but it's not like okay. a full time, but they'll help. Yeah. Like would host like like so you go to the hospital and you're like I can't physically lift this person. Security guards. Security they help. Guards. Okay. Okay. Yes. So it's not like you have to be like a, a liability thing where you have to be employed with the funeral home to move a body. No, if I need help, like and stuff like that. Like they're employees, but they're not like the security guard moves, but that's part of their job. Okay. The okay. nurses help sometimes. That's I don't know. If that's a part of their job, but. They oh, help them oh, often, oh, oftentimes, <laughs> but always be prepared in the job for them not to help because there's plenty of instances like you get a, you know, a newbie cop on scene. He ain't, he ain't gonna, no. he ain't gonna help you. No. Oh, he's scared. <laughs> you know, it takes <laughs> a minute he? sometimes, but then there's cops that are amazing and like, they're the local cops. They show up They're They're always there to help. And then other times, no. And even like it. I feel like yeah. it's one of those things where like people would either be like really fascinated or really freaked out. It takes a little like, time, I think. Yeah. It just takes a little well, it time. It takes a specific personality. Yeah. I guess. Maybe. If that makes sense. Like once you, it's like you, once you see it enough, once you do it enough, once you hear it enough, not that you get disconnected to it, you just accept it. Yeah. You're like, that's reality. Is it ever hard to like deal with death on a regular basis? I've definitely had lows. Yeah. I've had big lows in my life. The pandemic was a low. Yeah. That was a problem with death. But I've also had my my TikTok channel. So it's like I've really been able to feel more understood, connect with more funeral directors that are not in my own town and area because yeah. it is such a small industry. There's only like 24,000 of us. So like wow. very small. You really do know everybody in the industry. So like to make friends outside and talk about these things. I also talk about death all the time mm -hmm. like all the time i can't help it like it's That's not part of your job yeah. and it's like i think that death and life are just so connected and everything in our life somehow goes back to to death it's every it's death is our biggest motivator it's our motivator to be successful to get a job to get a house to you know you because you're gonna die right so you know you want to no, have your, until to prepare it's we're all gonna so i talk about it with a lot of things like even my friends they come to me for advice and i'll just be like you're going to die. <laughs> what what kind of advice do you have? Because I'm assuming that family members who come to you whose loved ones have just passed, like they look to you for anything, like any kind of guidance, any kind of support. What do you usually tell them? It depends what they say. Okay. okay. I do think I'm good with people. I'll okay. tell you that. Like some, some things people tell me will catch me so far off guard that like I am panicking. Oh. You know, like what do you say? How do you respond? Like, you know, in really sad situations, I... I clear as day I had a father look at me and just with his two kids just and he was like how am I going to raise my kids I don't know what they eat for lunch I don't know what they their mom passed and the how do you I, I yeah I was like 25 I'm like what what you're telling me and like my heart just broke and I was just like one day at a time so it all depends on I think the situation what people say some people are you know very honest and like we will bond like in the office and get really into things. I'll share very personal stories with them, personal stories with, you know, so I, it's, that's why I love the job. I connect with so many people in same perspectives, people going through the same situations in different 
a lot of similarities. So if you did had like general advice for people who are struggling with death or struggling with a loved one that passed, like what would you like my husband still to this day really struggles with the fact that his mom passed away. I ago. find most men like in my own perspective, most men don't like to talk about death. Yeah. Most men are petrified to die. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a topic that they will close off from and just avoid it. I find not all, mm -hmm. but a lot, yeah. a lot do. Um, I think that you have to talk about it. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong about talking about something that is so common. Yeah. Like it's yeah. the it's one like thing we all have in common. How could you not have this conversation with people and like get into it and talking about other people's griefs and finding, you know, I've been through a lot of my own deep grief and like I've learned so much for myself by leaning into it, by being okay to grieve, not feeling like it's something I have to complete or finish, just kind of letting it ride and talk about it when I want to talk about it. I talk about my loved ones when I feel like it. Yeah. I talk about my own death all the time. Not in a morbid way, though. No, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, no, 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 I get that. Like, I, I, it's my motivator to do things in life. See, I, I've never had really the practice of dealing with death. I've been very fortunate in that regard, where other than my mother-in-law, I've never, I, all of my grandparents are still alive and well. Um, yeah. I, there's been no tragedies knock on something would <laughs> and, and, and like what about um anticipatory grief where like you're expecting a death of a loved one um even like my my great aunt that's been in hospice like she's still she's still no. around like what about your parents do you ever do you have anticipatory I, so, so, grief? so i because i've never really experienced again other than my mother-in-law yeah. but like, i was 23 three when she passed so for 23 years i never had to experience death and so like i'm i'm very fearful of it like i do have fears of anticipating death but i don't have any practice with grief if that makes sense so like i'm 28 which i understand is very young i understand that in my head is, is like is, logically is 33 young yes <laughs> okay yes, good you're very young. we're very young very women young. very young yes women. we are but the idea of like when I turned 28, I had like a panic attack. And in my head, logically, I understand I'm young. And like, again, granted, like knock on, knock wood, on so much wood, we're walking on all the wood. <laughs> I know that things can happen. And just because I'm 28 doesn't mean something's not going to happen as I'm just knocking on the stool right here. But again, when I turned 28, I just had a whole panic attack because the idea of getting older and getting closer to death scares the absolute crap and out you're of not me. completing the things you're supposed to be have completed have you completed it right are right. you actually happy are you content should you have done something different i don't All even think about things, those no? things <laughs> i just think about like death, death just scares me i think if you it scares your fears on death and i say this to my friends too whatever you're afraid of is telling you more about yourself and what you're actually fearful in your own life i think i, I, I like i think it's one of those things where like the idea is like what comes next what's after and like i am not a like religion's always always been a weird thing for me are you afraid about tomorrow no why you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring but i can guess like i have a pretty good idea isn't it crazy <laughs> like once once you take away the fact that you can't know something and you lose all sense of control people yeah are freaked out about and it i don't like it but i don't like the it. truth is you have no control over tomorrow either but i have at least a pretty good idea of like Comfort. what tomorrow is going to look like. Like I have a plan. My friend Mayan is coming into town. He's driving up from Pennsylvania. We're going to have a day in New York. We're going to go to the Strangers movie premiere. Like I have a general idea of what tomorrow is going to look like. Right. Sunday, I know I'm going to get some work done. I know I'm going to be sitting in my hotel room. Like, But at any moment on a random Tuesday, that plan is going to get totally train yes. railed when you get the call that somebody passed away, that this had well, an I'm hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen yes that's the crazy and I thing understand, like plans can derail but there's still like there's only so many tangible options if that makes sense what would you do instead if you didn't know what tomorrow was going to bring would you just you get up and do what you want things that made you feel good yes it's kind of slight planning not really you have things yeah. in mind but then again there's only so many tangible options but then when it comes to like what comes after death I don't even know what's pot like. Would you, you want to live forever? I I have asked this question before. I I do a question of the day. Okay. And I like I I I if if you had the option, would you live forever? 
And like, would I be a vampire, an immortal vampire? Absolutely. Oh, you would get so bored. No, I would not. <laughs> I would live it up. First of all, do you know how many cat? Like, I would open a cat sanctuary. Okay. I love. I'm. Why a don't you do it now then? I don't got time. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the time, I would have the time. But now no, I don't. No. <laughs> um, right. And I like. I I would travel the absolute world. I would learn about every single culture, now and before. But I when all that's over. You've learned all the languages. You've seen cats. it all. What do you, you mean? There's always more cats. And then, do you know how much cats reproduce? reproduce? I, it's a problem. I have five in the backyard. I, right. Exactly. I would. I would own a cat sanctuary, and I would take care of cats forever, and I would be so content. I think you should just <laughs> open a cat sanctuary, and then you'd be content to die. No. No. <laughs> no I would not. That's a- didn't get me there you thought you got me but you no, didn't no. <laughs> i believe that the, if you live fully you'll always be prepared to die if you're doing everything at your most i don't want to die personally like not now i'm also don't want to be here forever definitely not my body is going to age everything is going to age i'm not going to be able to walk i'm not gonna, there's going to be things but what if you could stay this age forever like immortal vampire I status like, i feel like i just get Bored. Well, then you can like you can end it all when you're bored. <laughs> like, like, you're, I just end it all yeah. now. I'm bored. Yeah. Like I yeah. just, like I just feel like yeah. Like I I'm I'm happy there's a finish line. Like I I am I'm happy that there's something to look forward but to. What if we get to the finish line and you're just sitting around watching everyone else live? Then I'm still bored. I, it didn't I'm fix gonna anything. hope there's popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> that. Chocolate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, love I that. hope it, I hope it feels like like peace. Do you know who Dolores Cannon is? That's like, not so uh, familiar. I, I watched some YouTube clips on her, but she always talks about like energies and stuff and your spirits. And I think that one, it's, I hope it just feels like utter peace. Okay. Utter peace. That sounds so nice. No. Um, I have a chaotic brain. I know. I, I don't love know. chaos. I, I thrive in chaos. Peace is. <laughs> I, but my schedule, same thing like work. I never know what the day brings. Like tomorrow I have a funeral. Like I'm aware I have a funeral in the morning, but other than that, I could be done at work right. by 12. So I live my life. Like I can't make a general plan for anything. I love that though. Ever. And it's very hard to get accustomed to when you're a funeral director. It can it can break people because you I'm just sure. you're canceling on plans left and right. You you get into something, but then you just start to learn like nothing is promised. My time is not promised. Nothing is promised. Like I can enjoy it or not. And it makes me push myself harder to do things, to, to use the time when I have it and not get complacent in I know what tomorrow brings because I don't know. And I get really lucky if like three days, nobody passes away. Like my laundry is done. My this is done. And then when I can, I just don't. And I go out to eat a lot and I enjoy that. The flow. I love that energy. I like, I feel like to an extent, I'm a really go with the flow person. Like, yeah. I was just at this event the other day and like people kept apologizing. Like, sorry, this is taking so long or sorry. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I feel like I'm generally a pretty go with the flow person. Yeah. But not about death. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not Maybe that is i think if you just talk about it more i i don't mind talking like talking about it doesn't freak me out it's really the idea of the unknown yeah that it stresses me out it gives me panic attacks it's even like, like you're gonna go watch this movie you said right and it's like okay if I, somebody told you hey the movie's really good and this is what it's gonna be about it's like all right you're you're yeah. preamping yourself because this is gonna be a good time yeah nobody's coming back to tell you what it's like when you're exactly. dead exactly like and they're it's so interesting but would you believe them right like there are so many people that claim like oh i passed and then i came back and i saw what heaven looks like and they write all these books and i'm like did you really i don't know i feel like maybe your brain shorted out you had some crazy yeah i don't 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 know know. maybe it's possible i just feel like that's something that we don't get privy to like we're not supposed to know are you are are you as a funeral director i think i asked you this earlier like before we started filming like do you do you believe in the spooky spooky things I do and I don't. I, I wouldn't judge either which way, but I'm definitely like a lot of things that I feel like I consume on the internet. I'm like, that's not real. Or that's over, <laughs> that's over the phone a little bit. I work in a funeral home. Like I'm with the dead all the time. Not that I think they want to stay with me, but there's been strange things that happened too, <gasps> where like I, it's weird. Like, tell me, tell me, tell me. I love spooky things. I was in the office one day and we have like an air conditioner unit in the just in the window Mm -hmm. so and there is a camera in the office like a you know like a security camera right so but when i was in the office i was sitting there was at the computer and 
I had never even went over by the window and I just heard this loud bang and <clears throat> the air conditioner had flown, like went out the window. Like it just came, went out and I was like, that is absolutely crazy. Like it's been in the, not touched, really weird. It freaked me out. I dragged the air conditioner up second floor and then I went and I watched the cameras and like you can see like you like and like in my mind, I'm like, was it the sun? But you can see like that there's like a flash, you know, like through the things and then you see me like and then I jump out of my seat like to go investigate. But like to me, I'm like, was that just the sun passing and it was coincidental or, or... was that like a flash because it was weird? You know, that's crazy. Or like sometimes I feel like I hear things. Like when we have like a make um, a makeup closet, we have a closet, and I put my makeup case in it, and I had sat on the other side of the desk for a while, ten minutes, and I hear a crash. Like oh, I didn't put the makeup case up right on the shelf, and it all came tumbling down. Open the closet door, and nothing. Everything was fine. But I was like, maybe I was just hearing things. I don't know. No, but like something no. upon me. Sometimes a part of me is like, mm, I don't know. Maybe I wasn't hearing things. Like I know what I heard, but. You know, my mother-in-law before she passed, I uh, worked third shift in the psych ward, Ooh. and uh, she used to have stories about just the ideas of feeling like she was being watched, and um, there were times where like she swore she turned the corner and she saw some someone something or some somewhat for a second, like too many times for it to just, just feel like different. Yes, uh, my father is convinced that I bring home spirits. <gasps> So like, like he always says it. I'm like, no way, no way. No way. <laughs> and he's like, no, I hear this. The, the the door will stay open for too long when you leave. Like, and he says it, but like, you're seeing things. I, I don't think so. Love that. I love. Like, I feel like when I'm at work, most of the time I'm alone. Like, most of the time I spend my time alone with the deceased. Like, it's just me and the deceased. You know, the wakes are only so many hours of funerals, yeah. you know, where people, the public are in or are meeting with families. Everything else is like behind the scenes. I always feel so at peace, so comfortable, like just silence. I work in silence. You'll like never catch me with, I can listen. I just never catch me with the radio on. I'm just always in silence at the funeral home alone. And I love it. <laughs> love it's it. So peaceful. I love it. It is. So I don't feel like, I don't get scared. I don't get jumpy. It, weird thing like i don't know i feel like it's peaceful like being dead seems peaceful i like that yeah i still don't no, i'm still like in another right. wood and <laughs> right not not for me sorry i mean i know one day one day i'm gonna knock on some more wood <laughs> a long time from now hopefully yeah, yeah. when you're not so afraid yeah yeah no i don't think it's gonna go away <laughs> it's okay <laughs> Do you have any other misconceptions or anything that you think people just don't understand about what it is you do or what it's like or anything that general public typically makes it harder for you? Like anything like that? Um, general misconceptions? I don't know. I think that I wish more people knew that we were most of us. I can't speak for every funeral oh, director. Yeah. I watch the news, believe me. But I feel like most people don't realize the genuine heart that a funeral director has and like yeah. they're like w it takes a lot for somebody to even decide they want to be a funeral director be yeah. a mortician whatever you want to call it like just to make that decision is pretty ballsy in, yeah. in my opinion and then you go as far as you're enrolling yourself in school like whoa double hit and then you get into this field and this field isn't a um mega paying you're not your salary is not going to be i should have been a teacher kind of thing you know a teacher teachers here make a lot <laughs> in new york a lot most You're of my lying. friends who are teachers are or very close to six-figure salaries but the cost of living here is also so expensive you try being a funeral director in the state of new york it so is funeral hard directors make work less than teachers in most cases wow in most cases Wow, that's it's wild. crazy to me. It's like I like I think nationwide the average is fifty thousand. I could be wrong. Forty eight thousand wow. nation. Wow. So a lot of funeral directors do not make great salaries. So you got to think about you're sacrificing your mental health and everything, and you're you're at work at three a.m. and you're working on someone's loved one. Be nice to your funeral. We're not trying to hurt you. We just want to get by. You know, right. like that's what I say. Like people, I feel like sometimes they yeah. We're very compassionate people. It's not like to me, like sales. The first thing I say to a family with a casket is it does not matter to me what you pick. I will show you the most expensive or the least expensive. We'll figure it out. 
it's not my job to decide what a good funeral is for you. A lot of people think we we have an agenda. We don't. I, whatever you want, I want to provide. And make sure you're, you're doing what you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the bigger thing. Not so much like I want to put you in the most expensive casket. And I go, I don't care. Don't care about that at all. Don't care. Interesting. I'm providing services. Like, that's the way I see it. I'm going to provide my best services. Being, you know, that's how I think it. most people do it. That's who people should sit with. I love <laughs> Hopefully. that so much. Well, do you have to go? Are no. You being called? No. It's no, you're okay. It's just my sister. No, that's okay. <laughs> no, don't stress. I, I'm a very unserious person. I, I don't care in the slightest bit. And I think we're, I think we're at time anyways. Oh, look at that. It's already She's five. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. That is. Thank you so much for hanging Thank you for having today. me. No, this was fascinating. Right? Like, I am such a true crime girly. I love it. We like, could have talked for it. hours. Oh, my God. I know. Yes. A hundred percent. If we didn't have another podcast to do yeah, after two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. But thank you so much for Absolutely. hanging out with thank me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you guys for hanging out with us. I hope you have a great rest of your day and hope to see you all next week. Bye, my lovelies. Hey, guys. I think most of y'all would agree with me when I say you can only really express your true self with your closest friends. My friends know me inside and out, and because of that, I can share anything with them. But friendships, like anything else, can be kind of hard to keep up with when life gets crazy. It can be schools, chores, jobs, or even when a best friend moves and has to change schools. Luckily, Instagram is here to save the day because they allow me to create close friends lists that allow me to send stories to just my besties. Like, maybe it's a funny meme that I found while scrolling, or maybe it's that photo I took while I was ugly crying during that sappy rom-com. I love being able to share that easily with just close friends to give them a laugh. There's a saying that goes, it's just the little things, and I swear it's still true. Because thanks to Instagram, I can share that everyday ridiculousness with my close friends.